Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to discover and succeed in the thing that God handpicked and called you to do. But before I get into that, I want to um, confirm and relate to you that your calling is more than the work you do. Let me clarify. It's important because most of us are, when people are looking for their calling, and I know when I first started out, I was looking for the thing that God called me to do. But when you look up the word calling in the Greek, in the context of almost every place where it is written, it is an invitation. And it is an invitation not just to works, but to have a relationship with God. He invites us into, a, first of all, a relationship relationship with him and then to an identity in Christ and from there as we build an intimate relationship with him and we become who he's already called us to be in Christ then we um, he reveals to us within our identity the and the gifts that he puts in us as new creations in Christ that the work that he calls us to do and how he wants us to do good works for him given the gifts that we have been entrusted and then he also calls us beyond the work that we do to live a blessed and abundant life and so many people get focused on what God called them to do that they miss the important things like the relationship that he wants to have with you the identity who you are in Christ and being confident in that because your works can and do change throughout the different seasons of life and also the life that he has for you. Some people are miserable in their life, but they're still trying to figure out what they're called to do as if they answer that question and all of a sudden arrive in their doing that it's going to check the other boxes. But if you don't have good relationships and if you don't have a relationship with God and if you're not confident in your identity, then what you do is not going to change that. It may even magnify that you are not confident in what you've called when what you're called to do. And at some level, in some place along your journey, if you do not um, stay rooted in your relationship with God and you do not walk in your identity in Christ confidently, then what happens is you can't sustain the work. Your character can and your confidence needs to be there to sustain the work and give you the work to face, to do, to sustain the work and give you the courage to do what he's called you to do in the hard seasons um, and in the difficult seasons when it doesn't look like it's a success, but you've heard from God through relationship and you're not just running out off of works. You're not just running after works. But I want to talk about how to, that being said, I want to talk about how to understand and discover what God has called you to do in the context of your overall calling and how he handpicks you for that work. And today I'm sharing from my book called Out a Blueprint for Walking in Your Calling with Clarity, Confidence, and Courage. I've written all these books and oftentimes I share from different places, but this this is such valuable information and people buy them all the time. And so I want to share it with you guys on my YouTube community. And so I want to talk about this is from chapter three out of my book, and we'll be brief here. Handpick. The apostle, the apostle Paul, when he wrote to the church at Rome, described himself in this manner. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. That's Romans 1.1. 1, 1. The word called in Romans 1.1 1, 1 means to be appointed for something specific. God chose Paul to be an apostle. It's, it's He's calling and cho choosing together to be an apostle before he was ever born or heard Jesus Christ call his name because Jesus Christ calls us by name as well. When Paul said yes to God's call, just like you and I, God set him apart on a course to fulfill the purpose that he appointed him to. 
And here's another word for called. Luke, the writer of the books of Acts, the, Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, went further in his clarification of Paul's calling. He used a special word, which I cannot pronounce in the Greek, but it's only found twice in the New Testament. And it describes how God uses uses Paul for his work, not because Paul was more special than any of the other apostles, but because he wanted to express God's predetermined purpose in choosing each one of us. The first occurrence of the word is found in Acts 22, 14, and it says, then he said, the God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. Hear this. It is the word chosen. That's how it's translated in the English. And then in the second occurrence, it's Acts 26, 16. But arise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both to things which you have seen and of the things which will yet be revealed to you. In this verse, it is translated as to make or to form. The word means actually, when we look into it deeper, to be handpicked by God, to be pre-purposed in advance, to handle for oneself, to make or to choose. And so God handpicks us and then he shapes us according to his predetermined purposes and the work, whatever that may be that he created and chose us to do. And that's what he does for you, beloved not according to your circumstances with or what the world says or concludes, not according to your qualifications, but according to his grace and his plan for you. So God took Paul, someone who at the time would have never become a Christian. He was a hater of Christian and a killer of Christians, let alone when he had been an apostle. And he made him a messenger to the Gentiles, Gentiles of all people. He did not like Gentiles. Paul was a pure blooded Hebrew. The word calls him a Hebrew of Hebrews. Uh, that's what he calls himself in the word, a Pharisee, a very religious Jew who separated himself from other people that were not Jewish. And so he thought the very ideal of Jesus was blasphemous until he met him on that road. Hallelujah. And But by grace, through faith in his name, all men could be saved and have a part in the covenant of Abraham was preposterous to him before that time. And he actually thought he was doing God a favor by persecuting the church. But... And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I want you to know that Saul from Tarsus became Paul, an apostle, not to Jewish people, but to Gentiles. Paul became a person that could become all things to all people, that he might win some to Christ. This goes to show that God chooses whomever he wants to do his will. Your calling is not based on things that can be boxed in into a figure outable formula. The mystery of God's calling is that he often calls us to do things we don't feel qualified or equipped to do. However, there is a special sense of purpose that comes from experiencing God's providence in your life, having to depend on him and knowing you cannot brag about what you've done, but only boast in God. 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 1, chapter, uh, verses 24 to 31 says, But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame, to shame the wise, and he has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him are you in christ who became who became for us wisdom from god and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written he who glories let him glory in the lord paul wrote these words but he wrote them 
after he experienced God's power at work in his own life, that everything that he knew, that all of his wisdom, all of his knowledge of the Jewish religion and culture and him being of the seed of Abraham did not matter. This is this man who was once um, responsible for persecuting Christians is responsible now for writing over half of the New Testament. He was not able to do these things because of his power, might, or wisdom and insight. No, God gifted, anointed, and equipped this man who had before been extremely religious, but ordinary, just like you and me, to do these works because God handpicked him for these works. Like Paul, God may have chosen you to do something that you never thought you'd do. He may have chosen you to minister to people that are very unlike you and you are that you are unaccustomed to. Or he could have chosen you to minister to people who are just like you and very and that you're accustomed to. The thing is is that when God chooses us and he handpicks us for something. It's not according to what we think. And many people say that your calling is in the place of your pain, but that's not always true. You can have a place of pain and God can say, I've healed you in that, but I want you to minister this. I'll never forget that I had written this book and the Lord told me to put it down because that's not the message that he had me to preach because that's not what he called me to preach in that season. And, and even though I thought it was good and I could identify with it and relate with it. And many times I have written things because that's one of my gifts that he has given me. And he said, that's not the message. So I am responsible for bringing forth what God calls me to bring forth and not just what I want. There's something that God has handpicked you to do. And that doesn't mean that you do nothing until you understand and get deeper in your relationship with God so that you can hear his voice. And so this is, so I want to talk now about how you discover it. So I've talked about how he handpicks you and what your calling is. And, but I want to talk about how you discover it and how you discover your spiritual gifts. And so when we talk about your spiritual gifts and when God handpicks you, he gives you spiritual gifts to help equip you to do what he's called you to do. However, he also made it so that you must rely on the Holy Spirit's empowerment for your gifts to work effectively. You could be doing a lot of things for God, but if you're not in alignment with heaven and what he's called you to do, Jesus said, when you get there, you'll say you did all these things, Matthew chapter 7, but I never knew you. He said, they will say, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons. I did all these mighty works in your name. You see how works are not at the top of the hierarchy of your calling, but I will say I never knew you. Um, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. That means you put what you wanted to do first and you didn't know God in intimate relationship. You see how an intimate relationship dictates what God calls you to do. Not always what you do, what you're good at, or even what people want for you. It's not the best story or what God or what people um want you to preach. God might send you to the least, to a few, to a small group where nobody will ever know your name. And God had to point that out to me even recently, you know, like I'm praying that my YouTube channel grows. And he said, what if it doesn't go to what you want? You don't rely on that. I've called you. And it's not dependent on man or what the world concludes or your circumstances. If you obey me, that is success and I will take care of you. And so I don't want to get into the spiritual gifts, but you can read through them um, in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. And then there's some in Romans 4, I mean, Romans 12, 4 through 8, and then Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. But one thing I do want you to know that some spiritual gifts are miraculous and some are natural abilities that God enhances with the supernatural capability to do things with such skillfulness that you know it's him working through you to will and to do his good pleasure. All spiritual gifts, whether miraculous or natural, work by the Holy Spirit. Paul listed them, and I just listed them for you. 
but what you what you need to know and what this generation whether young or old has begun to do is they want to microwave the process they want to rush through rush through the process and the truth is that you discover your spiritual gifts um, by yielding to the Holy Spirit and submitting yourself in a local church. You can take all the tests that you want. I'll give you a couple of examples. And a lot of times spiritual gifts tests are very accurate, but that doesn't mean God wants you to use that. But you don't know until you begin to do something. And when you begin to do something in the local church and serve other people, then your gifts become alive and they become apparent to you and others. And your gifts make room for you and those are the gifts that God will call you to use to minister to others um, as you begin to yield to the process inside of a local church and outside but it starts in the local church and people often want to bypass that but the staying power and the development of those gifts and the character that it takes is also as most often developed in a around a local body even paul who went out into the desert to spend time with the lord then came back and submitted himself um, to a local church um, even as an apostle he understood and he set that hierarchy of apostles and bishops and pastors and he understood that and he said it for a reason and so as you serve others with your spiritual gifts um, and even your natural gifts, the gifts that God has created for you will be, has entrusted to you and gifted to you will be revealed to you. He, the Holy Spirit, unwraps the gifts he's placed on the inside of you. Some spiritual gifts like those listed in Ephesians, are meant to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Other gifts are meant to be a witness to Christ's power and to love those who are still in darkness. But no one's gift is better than the other. All gifts, as all members of the body, are needed for the body of Christ to function properly. The thing that you have to do is honor the gifts that God has put in you as you honor your body, as you honor the Lord. Um, the body of Christ you are connected to needs you, needs your gifts to flow through you. And the people that you encounter in everyday life need you to operate in your gifts so that they can encounter this God, this Christ in His power and his power in a powerful way. Whatever role or function God has called you to in his kingdom, your spiritual gifts are meant to equip you to do the work he has called you to do. And that includes whatever season you find yourself in. Many times there are seasons when if you're a writer, you might be blogging. You might just be journaling. You might be writing people letters to bless them. You might be, then God might take you to write for um a newsletter or a book it depends on what season you're in and lots of times we want it now and when you talk about seasons especially for I'm going to talk about women because I can relate the most when my children were younger it was a different season than um, than I am in now so I put what God said, I was still able to use my gifts, but in a different way. And now that I'm an empty nester, I can function more in the preaching and the prophesying and the writing and the different gifts um, in different ways because I have more room and more opportunity to do those than when it was before when I was my priority was to raising my children. And so sometimes we even as women and men who are in a season when God is trying to prepare us and equip us, groom us and teach us and let us sit in a church or among a, among a body and get the character that we need to sustain sustain us in our calling what he's called us to do because your call to relationship and identity you're going to ever grow in that and so you don't arrive when 
you start doing something. So he wants you to get that. And we want to bypass that, as I've said. And what am I called to do, do, do? And if I'm not doing something, I'm not a success. But I submit to you that you are a success and success when you are obeying God. And when you discover your gifts and what God called you to do, you still need to submit that to him and know that he's handpicked you for something. And that might change and see, let me let me help you with the handpicked. God has called me to be an evangelist, whether that's here on YouTube. He's called me to preach, prophesy, and pray. I have it written in my journal when he told me that I've called you to preach, prophesy, and pray. I have it written in my journal when he spoke to me when I was on my lunch break taking a walk probably back in 2004 and called me and said, I called you to be an evangelist. I heard the voice of the Lord very clearly, and I went to church, and my pastor um spoke that word he said god has called some to be evangelists in this room and i asked the lord for a confirming word before i got to church that wednesday night and the lord was faithful to confirm his word my pastor didn't know that but i heard the word and i heard the confirmation and but i had a relationship with god so i heard him now there's many things that i'm good at but that's what he's called me to do but again it looks different in different seasons so he's pan and he's handpicked me for certain things so that is why the message is what he wants it to be and not what i want it to be oftentimes our plans don't line up with God's plan and we have to submit to the plan of the Lord that's what we signed up for when we say yes to Christ then we have to submit to his plan it's nice when they line up and what you want to do and what you have envisioned for yourself is what God has called and chosen you to be and do but that's not always the case oftentimes your plan is way off of what God would want you to do. Sometimes he wants you to sacrifice that thing, at least for a season, and then he gives it back to you. I think of Charles Stanley, one of my favorite ministers and pastors, even though I've never got to see him in person. I would love to do that, but he retired last year. Um, but that being said, uh, he talks about how he loved to do photography and he won i believe this is one of his stories so if i get it wrong somebody i apologize but um i've gotten his devotional for years um and i re i think it was probably back in 2002 or three when i read this story and he said that he wanted to be a photographer but the lord asked him to, sub to submit that to him and he was called to preach the gospel that's what he was handpicked to do. But later on in life, God gave it back to him. And most of the photos in his calendars and his devotionals that come out to those that are connected to his ministry are photo. I think all are photos that he has taken. So God will oftentimes have you surrender something so that he can um, push you or I, that's not the word, propel you into your calling. And then he will give that thing back to you in a season when you can balance it. And it's not what it's not. You're, you're walking in what he's called you to do and not doing what you thought you were supposed to do. See, in the world, a calling is a vocation. It's work. But in Christ, your calling is not just a vocation. It is an invitation to, as I said at the beginning, have a relationship with God. Become who he's called you to be. Do, yes, do the good works he's called you to do. And then to live the abundant life he's planned for you. And without understanding that we get off balance and we think it's about works. And then we go out <clears throat> We try and figure it out on our own and we can be way off field. Like Jesus said in Romans 7, you did all these things, but he says, I never knew you. You never submitted to me. You never did what I called you to do. You never had an intimate relationship with me to figure out what that was. And in that intimacy, that's the way that we surrender. I don't think I could have surrendered the things that God has asked me to surrender and walked away in the hard seasons and, thing, and seasons when I wanted my way giving up things and people and, and situations that I really wanted 
but for the call of God, because he had my ear and your ear is what God needs because the ear is how we hear him. The ear is, is connected to your relationship with him. And in different seasons, you hear different ways. But anyway, I hope that this bless you. And I hope that you understand in closing that God handpicks you for something. And the way that you discover what he handpicked you for and called you to do is to submit yourself to a local body of believers or people, Christ followers, who are living for Christ and not just in their gifts, but in their character and their fruit and, and work it out. And he will reveal those gifts to you. And he will also show you what he's called you to do season by season using those gifts.